Hello, this is John Small again, and today I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be talking about the. Uh, I'm going to do. A, I did a study on the Epistle of First John. I'm going to first uh, break down certain verses throughout the Epistle, and then I'm going to explain the verses. All right, chapter one, verses one through four. God is telling us through John how that how they or the say the uh, saints had seen and heard Christ and his words from the beginning. And he declares this unto the saved he is writing to. And to us as well as the reason was that they might have joy and fellowship with them and have fellowship with our Father and his Son Jesus. That was the breakdown and then this is the explanation. This is basically a salutation but God wants us to have fellowship with him and with the brethren and wants us to remember why we, we are saved and who saved us, which is him. You understand what's going on here? It's basically God is telling them that, hey, that, uh, hey <clears throat> he's basically uh, telling them that y'all have seen and heard Christ from us. And he's declaring this to the saved people and he's saying that, and it's to us too, and he's telling them it. And he's telling them this, that they might have joy and fellowship with, that, that they might have fellowship and joy with them. And have fellowship with the Father and His Son Christ. Verses 5 through 7. God is, again, I always put down God working through John on most of these because it is God writing through John. This is not really John writing, it's God inspiring. For the Bible tells you that uh, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation for the, for the, for the uh, prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but man, the holy man of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Same thing happened here. John wrote as he was as he moved by the Holy Ghost. So God working through John writes that God is the light, and there is no darkness or sin or iniquity in Him or of Him. Or that's that's Christ. And if someone walks in darkness or sin, but says that they are walking in the light or are or saved, basically that's what walking in the light is. Somebody doesn't save people. He says those kind of people that walk in darkness but say they walk in light are liars and hypocrites and they do don't know the truth. And basically they're lost is what it means. But if they are in the light, we are saved, and right with God, they will we, then we have fellowship one with another and have been cleansed from sin and saved by Christ. And basically then the breakdown is someone that walks in sin and continues in sin is not saved and are rebels. But the saved have light if they have, and if but if they blackslide from God they can lose fellowship with him Christ and the brethren. So the saved should be in the will of God. Chapter 1 verses 8 through 10. This is still all chapter 1. If we think we cannot sin, we are deceiving ourselves and are not saved. But if we confess our sins, He, that's, or in God, that's God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And if we say we haven't sinned, we are making God a liar by saying that. For God doesn't take away our sin nature when we get saved. And uh, our sin nature will be taken away and dealt with in death when we receive our glorified body. Because if you remember, Paul said in Romans 7, I believe that's it, Romans 7, I believe, he says, O wretched man that I am, and he's speaking about his sin nature. He's speaking about how wretched he is because he still has a sin nature. And that's after he was saved. And so anybody that says that they haven't sinned or can't sin is a liar. And is making God a liar with those beliefs and rebellions, and they are not saved. Alright, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. God tells us through John not to sin, but if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, which means we can plead and make our cause of repentance known to God, and He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, just as He promised. And Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. Which makes me Jesus the sacrifice, he's the payment, he's the uh, payment, the substitute for sin. Christ gave his life willfully on the cross so that 
that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We know Him if we keep His commandments. We know Christ if we keep His commandments, which is how God measures our love. By the way, a lot of people just want to talk about the love of God, but God tells you the way you measure, the way He measures your love is how much you obey Him. That's how He measures your love to Him. He doesn't measure by how nice you are to somebody or how much you don't hurt people's feelings. It's by how much you keep His commandments. But if somebody says that they love God but they don't keep His commandments, they're lost. That's all. That, that's as much as you can go. They're not saved. But who, whoever keeps God's commandments, a word, has the love of God, has the love of God perfected, or he has spiritually matured, and the Spirit is in him. And he that abides in Him or Christ should walk and live, live like Christ or conform to Christ's image. And this is the. Uh, and here's the explanation. God takes, I've already, an explanation in there, but I just kind of give a little bit more to it. God tests your love by how much you obey Him, and if you don't obey Him, you don't love Him and are either lost or backslid. But whoever keeps God's commandments is saved and can mature spiritually as he continues to obey God's Word. Chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. God through John gives the believers an old commandment, which is what they heard at the beginning, beginning the Word of God. He gives them this truth that the darkness is past and the true light now shines, which is Christ. He that hates his brother or brethren in Christ is not saved, but he that loves his brother or brethren in Christ abides in Christ and he has eternal life in him. But again, he that hates his brother or brethren in Christ is in darkness and is blinded by sin, the world, and Satan, and etc. And here's, the, here's my uh, explanation of this, of these verses. God simply reminds the believers of His Word and what they have already heard and seen in their Christian life and that the darkness of sin, death, and hell had passed from them and the true light of Christ now shines and that if you hate your own brother in the Lord, you can't be saved. But he that loves his brother or sister in Christ is in the light. Verses 12 through 14. God through John reminds us that our sins are forgiven us for his name's sake, Christ. He continues with the exhortation of the brethren with the fathers who have known God and the young men and the young men have overcome the wicked one or Satan. The little children have known the Father, and the young men are strong, and the word of God abides in them, or they are saved, and they have overcome Satan. There's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, word, wording in here. Talk about like the, you have the light, you have the spirit within you. The word of God abides in you. All that is basically other ways of saying they're saved. That's basically what it's talking about. But it also have means, and also you could say that it means when the word of God abides in you, they know the word. They know what God says. They know what He's talking about. They you know they know they, they know God's commandments. But it ultimately means that they're saved. And here, God reminds us that He forgives sins for His Son's sake. And, his, and He exhorts the believers that have overcome the world system and Satan and have heard and believed the truth. That's basically what the, these verses are. I, kind of, I give a, again, a breakdown of the verses, and then I explain kind of what these verses pertain to, what they're really talking about, kind of, you know, what they're talking about. Verses 15 through 17. God through John tells us not to love the world nor anything in the world. For he that loves the world is against God and is not saved. All that is in the world, the lust, the pride, the carnal things, fleshly pleasures, and, uh, and other, all other stuff, are all of the world and not at all of God. They are carnal, but God is spiritual and sinless. And everything that is in the world will pass away, and the lust as well, as, as well. But all that are saved, that have repented of their sins and believed it, on the blood of Jesus Christ will never pass away but have inherited eternal life. And here's, and here's what the verses are talking about. Here's my uh, explanation. God tells us that the love of the world is sin. And, the love, and, to, and to love the world is to be against God. For God tells us that all things of the world shall pass away. For in 2 Peter, God tells, tell, talks about the day of the Lord where he will destroy the earth with fire and burn up all the works thereof. So to love the world is to path is the path of destruction. 